A reading from the book of Genesis. When Abraham prostrated himself, God spoke to him. My covenant with you is this. You are to become the father of a host of nations. No longer shall you be called Abram. Your name shall be Abraham, for I am making you the father of a host of nations. I will render you exceedingly fertile. I will make nations of you. Kings shall stem from you. I will maintain my covenant with you and your descendants after you throughout the ages as an everlasting pact to be your God and the God of your descendants after you. I will give to you and to your descendants after you the land in which you are now staying, the whole land of Cana as a permanent possession, and I will be their God. God also said to Abraham, on your part, you and your descendants after you must keep my covenant throughout the ages. Evum Domini. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek to serve him constantly. Recall the wondrous deeds that he has wrought, his portents and the judgments he has uttered. You descendants of Abraham, his servants, sons of Jacob, his chosen ones, he the Lord is our God. Throughout the earth, his judgments prevail. He remembers forever his covenant, which he made binding for a thousand generations, which he entered into with Abraham and by his oath to Isaac. Dominus Vobisco. Laxio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Ioannem. Gloria Jesus said to the Jews, Amen, Amen, I say to you, whoever keeps my word will never see death. So the Jews said to him, now we are sure that you are possessed. Abraham died, as did the prophets, yet you say, whoever keeps my word will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham who died, or the prophets who died? Who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, if I glorify myself, my glory is worth nothing, but it is my father who glorifies me, of whom you say he is our God. You do not know him, but I know him. And if I should say that I do not know him, I would be like you, a liar. But I do know him, and I keep his word. Abraham, your father, rejoiced to see my day. He saw it and was glad. So the Jews said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and you have seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, before Abraham came to be, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid and went out of the temple area. Verbum Domini.
the Lord remembers his covenant forever. This was our refrain for the responsorial psalm today. And I think we have a habit of reciting things during the liturgy without much reflection on their full significance. And if we really think about it though, this refrain can serve as the overall title of sacred scripture. The overarching theme that connects both the Old and New Testaments is God's fidelity to his covenantal promises. God is always faithful, even when we, his people, are unfaithful. He shows us that the way to find the fullness of life and endless peace that he promises is by remaining in his word. As Catholics, we take for granted the blessing of participating in a universal church through which all of us are joined together to the Lord as members of his mystical body. Yet the work of building his church began a long time ago under the old covenant, was transformed by the establishment of the new and everlasting covenant, and the work continues unto the end of the age. In the first reading from Genesis, we hear how God had chosen Abraham, established a covenant with him, and promised to make him the father of the host of nations. Earlier in Genesis, God had said to Abraham that all the families of the earth would find blessing in him. And what is the reason that God chose Abraham when he could have chosen any other person on the face of the earth? It was not because Abraham was perfect or that he was completely without sin. In fact, there are several occasions in Genesis when Abraham makes poor decisions, such as lying about his wife's identity while they are in Egypt, or taking a concubine to himself as a way of hastening the fulfillment of God's promise to give him an heir. And while we cannot fully comprehend the mind of God and see all his plans with perfect clarity, we do see an answer to why God chose Abraham in the book of Nehemiah. In chapter nine, it says, you are the Lord, the God who chose Abram and brought him out of Ur of the Chaldeans and gave him the name Abraham. And you found his heart faithful before you and made with him the covenant. We know that while, God, while man looks upon the external appearances, God sees the heart. Despite his faults, God could look to the heart of Abraham and see a man who would be willing to listen and to obey God's word. And when God puts Abraham to the test by commanding him to offer his son Isaac as a sacrifice, God does, does this not for his own sake, as if God needed to see if Abraham would be faithful, but so that his faith would be manifested to us, to all who came after Abraham. It is because of Abraham's faith that God establishes a covenant with him. God promises Abraham that he will become the father of many nations. And in return, God commands Abraham and his descendants to keep, to remember his covenants throughout the ages. And by the time that Jesus engages with the Jews in his day, it seems that an important aspect of God's covenant with Abraham had largely been forgotten. The Jews seem to think that it's their filial relation to Abraham that is sufficient in order to be beneficiaries of the covenantal promises. They take for granted the fact that they are physical descendants of Abraham and they claim Abraham as their father. They are thinking of the covenant on a mere natural level without considering the very reason that God had made the covenant with Abraham in the first place. Abraham had placed his faith and trust in the Lord and was obedient to his word. He did what God had commanded him to do, even to the point of being willing to sacrifice his own son. 
being a physical descendant of Abraham is not as important as being a spiritual descendant. The true children of Abraham are those who walk in the footsteps of Abraham, who have faith, and who listen to the word of God. As Jesus says to the Jews, whoever keeps his word will never see death. There are those who claim to have Abraham as their father, and yet they do not behave towards Jesus as their father would. Abraham would have rejoiced to see the Messiah and would have welcomed him. But the supposed children of Abraham wish to put Jesus to death. They are not abiding in the truth, and thus they do not keep God's word. And as John the Baptist says during his public ministry, God can raise up children to Abraham from the very stones. Jesus points out that tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of heaven before the children of Abraham because they heard the word of the Lord and they believed. Those who have faith and who abide in the word of the Lord are considered the true children of Abraham and are beneficiaries of the blessings of the covenant. Now, it can sometimes happen that we Christians can take our baptism for granted. Perhaps we might regard ourselves as superior to all others who are not currently baptized members of the church. We might act as if our association with the church is enough to enter the kingdom of heaven. And yet Jesus makes it clear that mere association is not enough for salvation. We must also keep the word of the Lord. We must abide in his word. As Jesus carries out the will of the Father through works of charity and mercy, so we are called to follow in his footsteps. If we are truly to be called children of the church, we are called to live according to the teaching of the gospel. It is not enough to call ourselves Catholics and to think that our simple association with the church is enough. If we continue to allow sin, anger, hatred, bitterness, bigotry, resentment, envy, lust, greed, and pride to remain in our hearts, then are we truly listening to the word of the Lord? We have full assurance that God is faithful to his word and to his covenantal promises. And it's our responsibility to be faithful to God in return, to turn to him with our whole hearts and to serve him through good works.